Hey my cyber babies, welcome to the Mother Love Show right here on our YouTube channel. This handsome fella sitting next to me is Les J. Goodwin. He's written a book called Managing Like a Boss, Developing Develop Yourself Into a Leader. And we were talking and you were saying to us that, you know, anybody can, you know, nobody is going to really follow a boss. They're going to follow a leader. Let's talk about good leadership skills and bad leadership skills because some people will lead you right off a cliff and you just fall them right off. And there's so many. My husband always says there are more leaders than there are followers. There are more oh, followers gosh. than there are leaders. I'm sorry. There are more followers than there are leaders. That's correct. What constitutes a good leader? Well, one is the old saying, I centered or other centered. It always has to do with I centered. If you're an individual, all you care about yourself, mm -hmm. you're not going to be a good leader. If you're other centered, you're going to be a great leader. Because other centered and I centered. Yeah. But doesn't it take the I centered to understand that you have the strength and the ability to be the boss? Mm -hmm. Because everybody's not going to be the boss and everybody's not going to be the leader. They're going to be more followers. What does it take to constitute, you say, an I, a, a other centered? Mm -hmm. How do you become other centered? Confidence. Mm -hmm. Confidence and self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So once you understand about yourself, I keep mentioning the word awareness. Mm -hmm. Awareness. You could be a great leader, and there have been great leaders, and there have been poor leaders. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the poor leaders and what happened, is their insecurities creep in, their egos creep in. Okay, So you have to keep in check those other elements of our human nature that creep in mm -hmm. to distort everything. And it creates a distortion, and then you're not a great leader because it's distorted. You know, I, I'm, I, you, you've been in the banking industry, you were in the banking yes. industry for 36 years. Yeah. And when you see how the CEO of Wells Fargo, what do you look at his leadership skills, especially in the banking industry? What goes through your head when you see what he's going through and what he's done? Yeah. I think that everyone in a leadership role should take, should take ultimate res responsibility for those things that happen. Mm -hmm. And they do know what's happening in their organization, especially if it's generating such a large profit for the company. Or, so you don't buy that, well, I kind of didn't know what was going on with two million people. But, the, but when his constituents, when his, the people under him were saying, this is what we got to do. We got to get and we got to build up the numbers. Is that coming from the top down? Yeah. Well, you do get removed as you move up. It does happen. But then you set up safeguards, as I did in my career, to follow how things are happening at different levels in the organization. So I would get feedback to understand what is the driver underneath this mm -hmm. and know the truth. Mm -hmm. And I would say that sometimes we get disconnected at the top to not knowing what's going on at the bottom, and that's what happens. And they don't take responsibility for not setting up safeguards to protect from something like this happening. How do you set up those safeguards, especially when you say that the higher up you go, the more disconnected you can get? And is that the sign of a good leader, that the higher up you go, the more you disconnect? No, it's not the good sign of a leader. Okay, I just was wondering to know if no. I should be disconnecting from anybody connected, <laughs> you know. Uh. So how do you how do you make sure that gap doesn't happen that you don't disconnect from the people who you are leading yeah. so that you can continue to be an effective leader? You got to leave the open door policy around you mm -hmm. so that people can come to you and talk about things and bring to you awareness. I had an example in my book where somebody didn't come to me early enough with a problem so I could fix it. Mm -hmm. And I was more upset that they didn't come to me early enough than the problem itself because if they would have came to me at this period, I could have fixed it. They came to me so late, I couldn't fix it. And so leaving an open door, so you have to create that environment that they feel free mm -hmm. to come and talk to you about these so issues. That, so the, uh, the line of communication is open. You know, I work in the entertainment industry, yeah. and th there's a line of communication that, you know, people just uh, don't, don't talk to the star, don't yeah. look them in the eye, don't, don't, look, don't walk to them, don't you? And I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. Do you, I mean, how, do, how does that equate having a good production? And this, your book uh, is, is implicated as well for the show business industry yes. because you got to be a good leader in this business. Yes. And one of the things that I thought, I, I figured I was being a good leader. You know, I had an open door policy. Everybody saw me in my underwear putting my, you know, my, 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 uh, all of my lavaliers and everything on. And it backfired on me because they said, you cannot 
talk to the segment producers and the grips and the gaffers and you can't have this open door policy with them and I didn't understand that and when we come back Les Goodwin is going to help me understand how come I kind of crashed as a leader and how you don't have to crash. He's written a book called Managing Like a Boss, Develop Yourself into a Leader. And we'll be back.